and welcome back to my series of videos for General Chemistry 2. For the past few videos, we've been looking at reversible reactions, and we found out that we can learn a lot about the concentrations of the different reactants and products once a reaction reaches equilibrium. Today, I want to look at what happens after the reactions at equilibrium. It turns out that when a reaction reaches equilibrium, it may not necessarily stay there. For example, suppose we have this reaction, in which acetic acid dissociates to form hydrogen ions and acetate ions. It's a reversible reaction, and the equilibrium constant has a value of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. But now, suppose we add some more H plus ions to the solution. What will happen? If we do that, we're adding a product, and that means this ratio will increase, and it'll become larger than K. However, reversible reactions always try to be at equilibrium. In this case, that means the direction of the reaction will change so that the amount of product will decrease. In other words, because we added some additional product, the reaction will shift to the left to try to get rid of some of what we added. A similar idea also happens if we add reactant. So, if this reaction was at equilibrium and we add some acetic acid, there will be too much reactant now, so the reaction will shift to the right to try to get rid of it. We can get something similar to happen if we take away a compound instead of adding one. For example, suppose the reaction's at equilibrium and we somehow take away hydrogen ions. In that case, now there's not enough product, so the reaction will try to replace what we took away. So the reaction will shift to the right. In the same way, if we take away some of the reactants, the reaction will shift to the left. This is a pretty simple idea, but as we'll see in later videos, this simple idea, that a reaction will change direction if we add or take away a compound in the reaction, is a crucial reason why living things are able to maintain homeostasis, where the balance of molecules and ions in the cells and body fluids are kept within a range that helps to keep the organism alive. This behavior of chemical reactions was discovered in 1888 by the French chemist Henri Le Chatelier, so it's called Le Chatelier's Principle. It states that when an equilibrium is disturbed by adding or removing one of the compounds, the direction of the reaction shifts so that eventually the equilibrium is restored. It's one of the most important ideas in chemistry and biology, so let's look at another example. Suppose we have this reaction. Calcium ions and sulfate ions react to form solid calcium sulfate, and this reaction is at equilibrium. But now we remove the solid calcium sulfate. For example, we could do that by pouring the solution through a piece of filter paper so that the ions would go through the paper, but the calcium sulfate would be filtered out. When we do that, that means we've removed calcium sulfate from the reaction. So Le Chatelier's principle tells us the reaction will shift to the right in order to get back to equilibrium. There's one more interesting way that Le Chatelier's principle can affect the direction of a chemical reaction. Suppose we have the following reaction, which is an exothermic reaction. Just like any other reversible reaction, Le Chatelier's principle tells us that the reaction will change direction if we add or remove one of the chemicals. But Remember, I mentioned a moment ago that this is an exothermic reaction. That means it releases heat, so we can think of heat as being a product of this reaction. We can show that by writing the symbol for enthalpy, delta H, on the product side of the reaction. But think about what that means. Le Chatelier's principle tells us that if we add one of the products, the reaction will shift to the left. That includes the heat. So, if we heat up the container in which this reaction happens, we'll shift the reaction to the left. On the other hand, if we cool down the container, it's like we're taking away heat. So that means we're taking away a product, so the reaction would shift to the right. Let's try another example. Suppose we have this reaction. This one is an endothermic reaction, which means the reaction absorbs heat. So, heat goes into the reaction, not out of it, and the delta H, then, belongs on the reactant side. 
what will happen if we heat this container? In that case, we're adding a reactant, so the reaction will shift to the right. Le Chatelier's principle is a vital concept in chemistry, so we'll spend time on it in our lab course and in the lecture part of the class. It's so important that we won't cover more material today. In the next few videos, we'll apply all these ideas to help us understand how acids and bases work. I hope you'll join me for that. But until then, have a good week.